。现在左派在利用很多种方式，让那些根本就不需要打疫苗的孩子打疫苗。像是周二新闻中给大家报道过的，旧金山正在计划过几个月就要实行，如果五岁以上的儿童想要进到一些室内活动的话，就要出示疫苗证明才可以。C N N 透过芝麻街这么经典的儿童教育类动画片，让里面的动画人物呼吁孩子去打疫苗。纽约市长 b e l a s i o 说，只要来到纽约市政府的疫苗接种点接种疫苗，就会获得一百美元的奖励。除了这些之外，为了催促更多的小孩赶快打疫苗，纽约州上任不久的女州长 c a t h y h o c o 研究出来一个方案，叫做接种。教育毕业的疫苗奖励奖学金，这个奖学金的意思就是跟他名字的书面意思是一样的。你先接种疫苗，然后你再接受教育，然后你再毕业，是这样一个程序。他这个奖学金呢，是针对五到十一岁的儿童。如果孩子至少接种了一次辉瑞的新冠病毒疫苗，那么他们就有机会赢得为期四年的纽约州立。或者是纽约市立大学的全日制奖学金，包括学费、吃饭、住宿以及交通费等等，一共有五十个名额，抽奖获得。So parents, listen up, listen up. Now the fifty dollars is wonderful, hundred dollars is awesome. Keep doing that, but we have a plan I'm announcing today. It's called vaccinate, educate, graduate, and what that means is. Anybody have kids in this age group? You're not going to want to miss your chance. We are going to be allowing people to get vaccinated, and then to be part of a pool, and we'll be selecting 50 names of children who will receive a full ride to a SUNY or CUNY institution. <laughs> Tuition, fees, room and board, the whole nine yards. So if one of your children win this, you should probably take them to Disney World because that'd be a very good thing. You'll have extra money now. You don't have to be saving for college. So everybody with children,、uh, Nisa, this will be announcing 50 winners over five weeks.、It、takes place November 22nd until December 20th. November 22nd, December 20th. 放松吧，你不用给你的孩子攒学费了，政府帮你拿这个钱。只要你送你的小孩去打疫苗，你就有机会获得这个千载难逢的机会哦。机会是人人都想要抓住的，只要抓对了时机，很多事情就会产生意想不到的结果。今天在这里 ，AI News 也提供给大家这样一个机会。只要大家来登录 nigla.com 这个网站，你就有机会找到你毕生最爱的指甲油。Niji Nails 采用 t e n f r e e 的材质，现在市面上最高规格、最安全的材质就是这一种。不光大人能涂，如果你有可爱的女儿，也可以跟女儿来一个温馨可爱的母女美甲。这样一出门，别人就会投来超羡慕的眼光。哎呀，这哪是母女呀、啊？明明就是一对青春靓丽的姐妹嘛！颜色多种多样，发挥你的想象力和创造力，只需要很少的金钱就可以买到质量超高的指甲油。以后做美甲再也不用花个百八十块钱了。现在就登录 n i g l a c o m 来发现属于你的颜色。在结账时，只要输入折扣码 AI News 十，就可以享有九折的优惠哦。好，下面让我们回到节目当中。这一条激励政策是完全针对家长的。五到十一岁的小孩，你跟他讲大学学费有多少钱，他在乎吗？这个政策就是冲着家长去的，让家长亲自的、自愿的、高兴的带着孩子去打针。在纽约的州立大学，平均一年下来的费用是两万七千三百五十六块，如果读四年，那就是将近十一万的费用。这个费用对普通的工薪阶层来讲非常不容易。对于申请助学贷款的学生来说也是非常的不容易，但是现在民主党告诉你，只要你的五到十一岁的小孩子现在赶快去打疫苗，打了你就有机会参与抽奖，一共会抽五十个人呢，只要抽中了，这十一万的费用可以全数免掉。政府不仅利用金钱来让家长带小孩去打疫苗，这里面还有另外一个推手，有超过百分之六十五的学校也参与到其中。为了让小孩更加方便的打疫苗，我们干脆就把疫苗站设在学校里不就好了？走过路过千万不要错过，反正你都来学校上学了，你就顺便把袖子卷上去。
打一针疫苗吧。So what we did was we surveyed all the schools. We asked them to partner with us. At least half of all the school districts are going to be doing in-school vaccination opportunities. You know, however they want to do it, whether it's weekends, during school, after school, we're going to let them do that.、Uh, we're also, or I'm sorry, 60, 65% of school districts will be hosting them. That's even better than I thought. This vaccination policy is basically a two-headed dog. Can children choose to not get vaccinated? The vaccination is set up in school, and students are all vaccinated at once. 那剩下少部分不打疫苗的孩子会不会被当成是另类？而政府要发放的全额奖学金，不是应该给那些表现优异的学生吗？那些在学校里面获得了非常好的成绩、获奖的、经常参加志愿服务的、在同龄人中做榜样的孩子，为什么他们受不到这样的待遇呢？因为政府一切想要的只是掌控权力，他们不想要花钱鼓励孩子们变得更好。他们想要花钱鼓励更多的孩子打疫苗，就是这么回事鼓励政策不仅仅是在孩子的身上，在奥地利的维也纳，一家妓院也开始提供疫苗的接种。如果你选择在他们妓院里面打疫苗的话，妓院就会免费送你三十分钟的时间。小姐，你自己来挑。Come for the vaccine, stay for a little something extra. A Vienna brothel is providing COVID-19 vaccinations and giving those who take up the offer a 30-minute session with a quote lady of their choice if they get the vaccine at the on-site clinic. Christoph Lilacher is the director. And we thought it's actually a great action to make such a statement, especially in our industry. And now we have a great vaccination site, and we're very popular. 这个新闻我刚开始听到的时候还以为是个笑话，其实政府想要推动全民疫苗没有那么简单。但是他们只要联合这些商家，联合孩子的父母和学校，这些人会完全帮助他们，让那些没有接种疫苗的人一个也不落的都打上。如果一个社会想要变得越来越好，对于小孩的教育是完全不能忽视的。在十月份的时候，我们曾经报道过一个新闻。一位弗吉尼亚州 Fairfax 县的妈妈发现，儿子学校的图书馆里竟然给学生提供恋童癖以及同性恋的书籍。一打开书一看，这里面都画的什么乱七八糟的，也太恶心了吧！于是这位妈妈她就拿着这两本书出现在校董会上，质问。为什么这样的书会出现在学校的图书馆里让孩子看？下面就让我们回顾一下当时的画面。友情提醒：小朋友请迅速撤离。下面的内容只限成年人观看。The books were available, and we checked them out. Both of these books include pedophilia, sex between men and boys. Both books describe different acts. One book describes a fourth-grade boy performing oral sex on an adult male. The other book has detailed illustrations of a man having sex with a boy. The illustrations include fellatio, sex toys, masturbation, and violent nudity. Pedophilia here. From the author Maya Kobabe, quote: "I can't wait to have your cock in my mouth. I am going to give you the blowjob of your life, and then I want you inside me." End quote. From the author Jonathan Evison, what if I told you I touched another guy's dick? What if I told you I sucked it? I was 10 years old, but it's true. I sucked Doug Goble's dick, the real estate guy, and he sucked mine too. This is not an oversight at Fairfax High I'm sorry. School. May, this may, yes, may material. Of, please, there are children in the audience here. Do not like, interrupt my time. 时隔一个月再看一次，还是觉得好恶心呢、啊。谁能写出这样书来呀、啊？写书这个人，他根本，他唯一的方式就只能认罪悔改，让主耶稣的宝血来洁净他。他更应该去圣地旅游走一走，看看耶稣走过的路，洗涤洗涤他污秽的心灵。在这里呢，推荐给大家嘉南美的旅游公司，非常棒的基督徒保守派的企业，为了圆大家的圣地旅游梦，精心设计了去以色列和埃及的旅游线路，而且这套旅程还有一个非常好听的名字，叫做以色列埃及蒙福之旅。我们认识神多蒙福啊！
，能够亲眼去看一看圣经里面写到这些地方多蒙福啊！耶路撒冷的哭墙，耶稣祷告的克西马尼园，还会坐船游加利利湖。我们还要走一趟摩西当年带领以色列人出埃及走过的路，还可以骑着骆驼登上西乃山，站在实地体验圣经中的场景。再一打开圣经。里面写到的场景都历历在目，全都变成彩色生动的画面了。在这个感恩季节来到的时候，来感谢一下辛苦了一年的自己，感恩一下一直爱我们的爸爸妈妈。这趟行程，不管是自己走，还是送父母，或者是全家一起去，都是非常不错的选择。要报名，请和嘉南美的旅游的 Pamela 或者是 Wendy 两位姐妹联络，电话1877739937。名额有限，赶快报名！而且 AI News 的观众朋友有优惠哦。那刚才我们看到这个妈妈去校董会的新闻已经过去一个月了，为什么我还要再提一次？因为这位妈妈自从在校董会公开反对了这两本变态书之后，就把那帮人给得罪了。现在她被禁止进入到这个学校的图书馆。上个礼拜的时候，她还跟孩子一起去了一趟图书馆。图书馆的管理员也没有说不让进呢，而且还帮他跟孩子找到了他们要找的书。结果第二天，学校的代理校长就打电话给他，告诉他说：“我们不允许你进到我们学校的图书馆。” But you also were notified that you were banned from the school library. You were not allowed to be in the school library. Is that correct? Yeah, that actually just happened、um, this past week, and. I had made many、uh, efforts to meet with the principal of my child's school, which is Fairfax High School, and the acting principal is、uh, a woman named Maureen Keck.、Um, you know, in the beginning, I went the very next day. That I went at 10 a.m. on Friday morning on September 24th to the school to see her, and she didn't have time for me. And she asked me if I could come back next week, and I said to the secretary. I think you guys should probably make some time. This is kind of a time-sensitive、uh, situation, and you know, by the time we finally did meet and we spoke briefly for about ten minutes, and I asked Maureen Keck, "Have you seen the materials?" and they made her very uncomfortable when I showed them to her. She said, "That's enough. You can、uh, take it away," and I did. Um, and then the review process was begun. So it's been, you know, several weeks. It's been, I guess, what about six weeks since I spoke, and I haven't heard from her since. So she called me on Thursday, and I was just thinking, oh, she's probably calling to tell me something about maybe the update on the review process itself, which they said would take 45 days. But no, she was calling to tell me that she had been informed that I had been in the library the week prior to check out another book, and that I was not allowed to do that. She was trying to make sure that I did not、uh, get to see what else is in the library that they don't want parents know that our children have access to, because that was the third book、um, that I had, you know, found. So this book, of course, is of similar material. It's as equally pornographic as the first two that I read on September twenty third. Now, 说谎的人怎么可以这么多？这个校长就这样脸不红心不跳的打个电话给家长啊，我们是按照规章制度办事的，我们不是针对你，是所有的家长，我们都不让进图书馆。这些所谓的教育工作者一张嘴全都是谎话。更可气的是，这位家长在图书馆里又发现了一本变态的书。学校里面到底还有多少这种类型的书？这个事儿是谁在负责的？什么书能放到学生的图书馆，什么书不能？这全部都是未知的问题，没有人负责。不仅仅是学校里的书这样 ，Fairfax 县政府最近和公立学校之间进行了合作，针对八年级、十年级和十二年级的学生展开了青少年调查问卷。这个调查问卷不是强制性的，你可以选择填或者不填，但是里面这个内容实在是让人接受不了。这个调查问卷面对的填写人都是青少年，年龄最小的才只有十二岁，但是内容实在是不堪入目。这个问卷一上来就先问你多大啦？你读几年级呀？你是男生还是女生啊？然后这个问题就开始下道了，你是不是变性人呢？你同时跟几个人发生过性关系呀、啊？
8th, 10th, and 12th grade students in Fairfax County will have the option of participating in the 2021 Fairfax County Youth Survey. The survey begins with asking students how old they are, whether they are male, female, or transgender. And the survey asks students their sexual orientation, their race, and their experience at school. The survey also asked students several questions on how they spend their time after school, questions on their home life, bullying, their feelings during the past 12 months, plus how often students use tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs. It doesn't stop there. The Fairfax County Youth Survey asked students questions about their sexual behavior, including questions like, have you ever had sexual intercourse? How old were you when you had sexual intercourse for the first time? How many people have you had sexual intercourse with? And during the past three months, how many people have you had sexual intercourse with? There are more explicit questions on this survey. 尽管Loudon County的校董会在今年闹得沸沸扬扬 想要改变一个国家的文化很简单，想要教导出一批坏人很简单，每个人从小都知道怎么说谎，没人教就会，但是我们却要花一生的时间去学习衡量善恶的标准，去学习要怎么做一个好人，做一个和神心意的人。想要
And it's just the amazing part. Those very same overpasses somehow allow buses full of white kids to get through. That sounds like magic. How does it work? Well, it's possible the overpasses that Buttigieg referred to are actually drawbridges manned by vigilant bigots with binoculars. Here comes the Puerto Rican bus. Lower the overpass. Or maybe come to think of it, the problem is the buses themselves. In New York, children of color are being herded into unusually tall buses, like those top-heavy double-deckers they used to have in London that the Beatles sang about, just to prevent them from reaching the ocean. You can't get to the beach in a bus like that. 对，高速公路是歧视，立交桥是歧视。立交桥一看，呀，白人的车来了，你赶快升高让他过去。呀，黑人车来了，你马上就降低，不要让他过去。很多时候，我们都希望。都追求孩子要读名牌大学，斯坦福、哈佛都是家长期待的最高学府。这一位哈佛的高材生交通部长跟那一位斯坦福的教授，都是普遍意义上的成功人士。在社会中，他们代表的是知识水平、天才。他们口中说出来的话是真理，他们是家长让小孩努力学习的标杆。但是这些人，他们浪费了他们学习的知识。他们在帮助左派推行他们的进程，在帮助左派来教导错误的谬论给我们的小孩。左派让你的小孩去打疫苗，拿着高额的奖学金来诱惑你，让你的小孩去上他们的学，学出来就都变成这个样子。高等学府不再是天才的代名词。哈佛大学从去年开始就推行校园内的男女混厕，还专门把不分性别的厕所放在学校的 App 上面，方便变性的学生找厕所。这不是我们期待的教育，这些人也不是我们应该要学习努力前进的标杆，这也不是我们希望孩子应该有的学习环境。名校能给你带来光环，但是不能带来美好的品格。箴言二十二章六节告诉我们：教养孩童，使他走当行的道，就是到老他也不偏离。教育是每一个人的责任。我们也看到，弗吉尼亚州就是一个非常好的例子。这个例子告诉我们。不是单单只改选了州长，一切就都会改变。社会文化的改变需要我们每一个人来参与、来扭转。国家的未来、孩子的未来，在于我们每一个人。如果我们持续的错失机会，那么情况会变得不可逆转。我们要非常清楚的是，我们现在有发生的机会。我们只要一起站起来反驳，就会胜利。国家的主人不是这些执政掌权者，而是美国公民。去抓住每一个我们可以行使的权利，不要放弃任何一次发生的机会。要改变这一切，先从改变自己做起。感谢每一位朋友，欢迎您继续收看我们的 AI News。我们也会努力的一直为您提供正确的圣经价值观以及时事新闻，捍卫真理，从你我做起。在这里呢，也非常感谢大家通过会员来赞助我们，帮助我们的施工继续维持运营。但是我们最近接到了一些银行发来的扣款通知，因为有一些朋友买了我们的会员之后，他可能忘记他曾经买过还是怎样，他想要取消。那么您当然是可以随时取消会员哈，但是请您在取消的时候来到扣费这个平台上面来取消，就是您当时付款的这个平台。那么这个平台呢，它其实有两个名字，一个叫 Coffee， 一个叫 Stripe。也就是说，如果你要是去看你每个月的月结单，它可能出来的那个名字就是 Stripe 扣了你的钱。那这个钱呢，就是您来赞助我们的这样一个费用哈。所以呢，可能有几位朋友有点搞不清楚，他们选择退掉我们会员的方式，就是直接跟银行报告说：“哎呀，我们的卡被盗刷了。”所以银行那边。就直接从我们的账户扣掉十五块钱来作为服务费，因为这个他们说卡是被盗刷的，银行就要去调查要处理这个事情，所以这个钱就是要我们这边赔偿，要给他们银行那边的处理费跟调查费。所以呢，很多朋友买了五块二一个月的会员，然后他一举报盗刷，我们这边就要赔十五块。我太难了。如果您要是不想继续支持我们，这个是非常 OK 的，可以从正常的程序来退款，但是请不要去找银行说盗刷，因为我相信没有一个人会盗刷你的卡来买我们五块二一个月的会员。而且从操作方面来讲的话，上 Coffee 来退掉会员没有
比打电话给银行更加的麻烦。所以希望大家呢能够多多包容，因为我们本来市工经营的就算是比较困难。然后你这一举报盗刷，我们里外里还得搭钱，而且我们也不会偷东西盗刷你的卡来买会员哈。所以非常感谢大家的支持跟包容，谢谢您。那稍后呢还会为大家继续送上我们的看看留言吧，也欢迎大家有任何想要跟我们讨论的问题，都请在下面的留言区留言。好，那节目就到这里，我们待会儿再见喽。